Hey guys, welcome to the Prelims Focus News discussion of uh, 17th and 18th of October. So let's see the very first news. First news is about Universal Social Security Plan. Under uh, it, actually, government wants to come with a Universal Social Security Plan and want to subsume its uh, sub uh, schemes, whatever is being existing, uh, running by the government under the Social Security Plan. See, this Social Security Plan has not been came yet. There are just discussions going on. All right. So yeah. Uh, I mean, under it, uh, government has said that uh, whatever the 17th existing is schemes are being running, they will be subsumed under this universal social security plan. And they have said that uh, as of now, the government has, you know, drafted around rupees 1.2 lakh crore plan under which the poorest of the poor people of the country will get coverage under the social security scheme. Now, why is, why, what is the need of this scheme? Basically, India's total workforce stands for 450 million and it is being said that only 10% are in organized sector. Just imagine, just 10% I'm talking, they are in organized sector means 90% are in unorganized sector. All right. And 10 million people are said who are to, you know, join the workforce every year. But most of the them, you know, don't even receive the minimum wage and lack all kind of social security coverage. All right. And most of the them are getting employed in urban organized sector. So that's why the government have thought of, you know, bringing with a come up with a universal social security plan so that, you know, they can get uh, the benefit of this plan. Right. Next is graded plan to combat uh, air pollution. See, guys, actually, Supreme Court has ordered government uh, in which uh, they have said to take stringent measures against the pollution level that is being going high in uh, you know metro city right that is delhi so that's why this graded action response uh, graded response action plan has been uh, you know framed by the government right so basically central pollution control board is going to monitor the air quality under this graded response action plan and they have given uh, the designation of implementation authority to environment pollution uh, control authority right so this authority will be acting as implementing authority of the plan and they will be taking the decisions on the future course of action whatsoever is being required to combat the uh, you know air pollution right and if data of any station shows a sudden spike in the pollution level a team will rush to the spot means at many teams will be employed see here it also written that the central pollution control board has formed around 40 teams to visiting various parts of delhi alone all right and if uh, these teams find that any spot of the any region they get a you know a rush in the spot and i mean they get a sudden spike in the pollution river so they will go to the spot and analyze the reason that what is the reason behind this uh, you know uh, proliferating this uh, uh, air pollution right? and they will just take the measures whatever is being requ uh, required to you know stop the pollution level which is being going high in that region at the very instant right at the very that instant i'm talking about right so yeah th that is that's why this great plan uh, great response action plan was in news next is about ins kilton guys there's nothing to learn as such about it just remember that it is an anti-submarine warfare straight corvette right that is it and these all the things whatever has been given are totally the specifications of this ins kilton so just remember this thing if you at all want to go to konbanaga karopati so they might ask that recently ins kilton was deployed it is named after what so it is named after a coral island belonging to lakshadweep a group of island all right and this is and this uh, you know this stealth corvette has a stealth feature under which it has a less less susceptibility to get detected by the enemy right and all right guys just remember that whenever some ship or some any kind of uh, submarine are having stealth feature then it's not that the enemy cannot detect them they can detect them but that uh, if that is stealth having a stealth feature then that ship or that uh, you know anti then submarine is having the less susceptibility of getting detected by the enemy that's the only thing right next is uh, news about boosting horticulture through remote sensing technology see guys uh, regarding this uh, uh, how to boost horticulture in our india per se so government has taken steps regarding that and government has deployed a remote sensing technology and geoinformatics these are the two technologies being deployed by the indian government and government has said that by march 2018 uh, as a deadline to complete the ambitious projects whichever is being going on to you know connect this remote sensing technology and geoinformation technology to you know develop our horticulture sector and regarding that a project is also running as of now in india that is project is known as chaman 
its full form is coordinated horticulture assessment and management all right so this is also you know uh, this is also a bid to develop india's horticulture sector and also help different states uh, whosoever is being identified suitable crops and crop type see under this uh, chaman program what will actually happen i mean overall this remote sensing and geoinformatics how it can help this horticulture sector to get boosted i'll tell you because see from remote sensing we will get to know the what are the weather condition of that of any particular region what are the soil condition of any particular region what is the how is the land use there and, and what is the crop mapping there so if all the data the government will have so government can impart that data to the farmers right and farmers can uh, you know see that data and accordingly farmers can plant different other horticulture crops whatever is being uh, you know required to uh, i mean whatever is being suitable to uh, i mean and in align to that climatic situation right so that's why uh, government has planned uh, to incorporate this remote sensing and geoinformatics technology to boost the horticulture next is world food day celebration on uh, october 16 was done to uh, basically raise awareness to the issues of poverty and hunger and the theme which was kept was change the future of migration invest in food security means just remember this in order to change the future of migration means of whatever this migration level is being going on that is main migration is being one of the major reason is less of food availability right so government must invest on food security and that is one of the goal of you know one of the of our sustainable development goal also that is we have to gain this objective of zero hunger by 2030 so let's discuss about food and agriculture organization who has you know organized this uh, you know uh, food uh, world food day so it is basically an specialized agency of united nations and uh, it leads international efforts to defeat hunger and serve both the developed as well as developing countries to you know and it acts as a neutral forum in which all nations can meet uh, together and you know frame any sort of agreement and debate policies whatever is being required worldwide uh, in the food security sector right next is about uh, national investment and infrastructure fund was in news guys see this is very important first of all because the question has also already came in 2017 prelims news right so basically uh, and sovereign wealth fund that is abu dhabi investment authority has said that they will you know award 1 billion dollar to uh, as a fund to this national in investment infrastructure fund so let's see what is it guys it is set up in 2015 by the government and it is kind of investment vehicle for the funding commercially viable whether it be greenfield project whether it be brownfield or any stalled uh, projects of infrastructure sector under which governments uh, will government or i mean it is being seen that that project has a future viability i mean future viability in the sense that uh, project if implemented uh, can you know give some sort of uh money to the government in the form of tax and all right so basically under this uh, national investment infrastructure fund the investment will be done in different sectors like energy transportation housing water waste management and other infrastructure related sector in india and the corpus of fund which is being proposed by the government was rupees 40000 crore with the government investing around 49% and the rest will be getting from the third party investors such as the sovereign wealth fund as we have got now right next is 447.5 lakh domestic workers uh, will is set to get legal status and minimum wages guys basically the ministry of labor and employment is considering a policy under which the uh you know domestic workers who were up till i mean it was being alleg it was allegations were there against the government that government is not recognizing these uh, domestic workers all right so government is planning that is ministry of uh, labor and employment is planning that uh, they will be coming they will be coming up with a national policy on domestic workers under which all these domestic workers will be given legal status right i mean they will be recognized by the government right and since they will be recognized by the government then there is a probability of them getting you know many governmental benefits like minimum wage or right protection from abuse and harassment which they are going through as of now right Uh, access of social security benefits health insurance maternity benefit then old age pensions benefit right so that's why this uh, kind of institutional mechanism will be uh, come up by the government under which uh, you know it is being said that social security cover will be provided to them and fair term of employment grievance redressal and dispute resolution mechanism will also be made uh, under this institutional mechanism uh, for the you know for helping these domestic workers 
नेक्स्ट इज कैंपेन ऑन वुमेन फॉर वुमेन and that is campaign is uh, that is an online campaign basically and this campaign is by the hashtag of i am that woman see up till now we were alleging that our society is patriarchal society which is absolutely right to an extent right now to end there is also existing gender bias hai na and it is being seen that women are not standing against different women that's why women sometimes don't fear to complain against some sort of you know mischievous activities that is being performed against them by some sort of male people or all right so under this campaign ministry of women and child development wants other women to you know stand for other women right see if if i am a woman and i am seeing that okay that woman is also standing for me whenever i am raising my voice against any mischievous thing then i will feel empowered that okay if i am raising voice then she's uh, you know she's backing me right so that's why you know this is the initiative of uh, ministry of women and child development so that you know women can uh, you know come up uh, and raising voice against the women and if they will do then you know it is being said that women hood will be unstoppable and they will in future they can contribute a huge amount to the you know welfare of the nation and all right next is call swachh bharat toilet as as a izzat ghar guys before few days if you remember then we have discussed uh, article in which we have discussed that uh, analyst have said that to get the to get the objective of swachh bharat avyan to, uh, by 100% we have to change the mentality of the person mentality of a family right so to i mean that's why center uh, central government have you know uh, taken the cognizance of that report and central government has you know issued the directives of different state government and said that the those uh, you know home where toilets are made they those home must be tagged as izzat ghar see now those uh, house will be tagged as izzat ghar means indirectly government wants to says that those uh, houses where there is no toilet that will be bezzat ghar all right so this is kind of uh, in the term so they will feel that okay say they are calling me bezzat ghar so i will also make a toilet in my home right so this is kind of you know um, uh, mental uh, mental hit that is being given by the government right so this is indeed a very good uh, step by the government so yeah next is against job reservation in private sector uh, this has been said by the niti aayog vice chancellor guys basically uh, there are see why there is a uh, reservation given by the government sector because government sector has a social responsibility right it is not private sector so government sector has a social responsibility that's why government sector gives uh, this reservation to this government employed right now it is being said by the niti aayog vice chancellor that uh, he is against the job reservation in private sector because there are few things which if being deployed in private sector then private sector has a possibility of you know uh, reducing its efficiency and what are those uh, things these are directly given in this there will be existing gaps which are prevailing those gaps will be you know will not prevail in future in uh, in conflict with the international standard impact in innovation and performance see i will, i'm not going to discuss all this you just you can read it yourself only right because whatever is being thing is given those you can write as a main answer if at all you know some sort of question comes that whether job reservation should be given in private sector or not so these are the sectors which are against i mean critical type of analysis this is right so just remember just read it through yourself you'll get to know more about it guys next is sawfish uh, are more threatened than tigers this has been said by scientists see actually world sawfish day has been celebrated on october 17 uh, so that's why it is being said that you know sawfish are uh, in india basically actually in the indian coast around uh, in last one decade they have been seen less than 10 times so that's why government has said that you know it is very critical and especially scientists have said that they are more threatened than tigers and elephants in fact and in iucn status guys it is given endangered as well as critically endangered species because there are different other i mean you can cross check yourself also 
I'm not sure about it, but uh, I've seen it in article also and I've cross checked in Google also. So both the things are showing that there are few species of sawfish which are endangered, few species are critically endangered and they are in schedule one of Indian Wildlife Protection Act 1972 and there are five species of sawfish and the skeleton, their skeleton is made of cartilages. These are few of the facts which are being mentioned in this article guys. Alright, so guys this was all about it. We will meet in the next class. Till then bye bye. Take care. Thank you for listening.